Interpreting an x-ray is a common station during OSCE, and you can miss out key details if you don't follow a systematic approach. Let's go through a simple six-step, top-to-bottom checklist to cover every aspect of a chest x-ray and ace that OSCE station. We start off by doing an introduction, which is basically checking that the x-ray details match with the patient. Then we move on to a quality check to make sure that the quality of the x-ray film is adequate. If these two are okay, then we move on to the systematic organ approach, which is essentially going from the trachea to the lungs to the heart, and then finally assessing any extra details that are seen on the x-ray. Watch till the end of this video to find out how you can download these free PDF notes that'll get you an A for your OSCE. Let's begin with the introduction and checking the x-ray details. So on every x-ray, probably on the top left, has written three key labels, and it's important to make sure you double check all of them. So number one, that's the patient's full name, number two, the date, and number three, the time. Once you confirm all these three details, then you can move to the next step. In order to read an x-ray, the quality needs to be good. And in order to check that, we need to follow an acronym called RIPE. R stands for rotation. And we check that by looking at the medial ends of each clavicle, right and left, and looking at the spinous processes of the spine and making sure that these two are equidistant. I stands for inspiration. And when taking an x-ray, the patient is often asked to take a deep breath in and hold in order for the lungs to be fully expanded. So we check this by looking to see whether you can see five to six anterior ribs. Now remember that anterior ribs are the ones that are pointing upwards. So just count them here. We can see one, two, three, four, five, and six. P stands for projection. That means whether the x-ray is taken AP, which is anterior posterior, or PA, posterior anterior view. Now most x-rays are usually PA and they're written on the x-ray film itself. E finally stands for exposure. And you do this in three ways. Number one, just check if you can see lung markings across the entire x-ray film. Two, check whether the left hemidiaphragm is visible to the spine. And three, check whether the spine is seen behind the heart. Now that we've checked the image quality, we can move on to the x-ray interpretation. Here are two examples of what a bad image quality looks like. So the image on the left shows low exposure and the image on the right shows high exposure. And we can clearly see that you cannot differentiate the spine between the heart and you can't even see the lung borders clearly as well. Let's start with the trachea. And in the trachea, we look for the four following features. Number one, the position. We need to check whether the trachea is central or deviated. Number two, look around the trachea to look for any paratracheal masses or lymphadenopathy in the case of malignancy. Number three, Check the carina, which is usually visible, which is the bifurcation of the trachea, and it's an important landmark for nasogastric tube placement. And number four, check whether you can see the right and left main bronchus as well. Here are two cases of tracheal abnormalities. The x-ray on the left shows pneumothorax, and you can clearly see the collapsed lung on the left side. And in pneumothorax, the trachea deviates to the unaffected side, which is the right side in this case. And in cases of lobar collapse, as shown on the x-ray on the right, the trachea will deviate to the affected side, which is the right side in this case. Now let's move on to the lungs. We'll analyze it from the top to the bottom so we don't miss out any parts. We'll start off with the apex. So check the right and left apex for any cavitation in the case of TB or consolidation, which is essentially just fluid. Then we move on to the lung fields. Check for symmetry, any opacities, or consolidation. So consolidation is just fluid within the lungs, whether that's blood, pus, or inflammatory material, it shows up as whitish areas on the x-ray, like here and here. And cavitation is just the opposite. It's an abnormal space filled with gas within the lungs tissue. Third, look at the hilum. Check for the symmetry and size. Any asymmetry may indicate malignancy. Fourth, check the diaphragm. Normally, the right is higher than the left because of the position of the liver. And note that the left diaphragm is above the gastric bubble here. Next, check the claustrophrenic angles, which are usually quite sharp. But this sharpness may be affected in consolidation or hyperinflation in the case of COPD. And lastly, check the pleura. Now, the pleura is not normally visible in healthy individuals, but we just check all of the lung borders just to make sure. And in the case of hydrothorax or hemothorax, these substances can actually accumulate in the pleura, causing a pleural effusion. In the case of mesothelioma, thickening of the pleura is usually seen. Next, we move on to the heart. Now, the heart is the most visible structure in the x-ray, and we simply need to check three things. 
Number one is the size. So we first look at the cardiothoracic diameter, which is this, and then make sure that the heart is no more than 50% of this cardiothoracic border. Note that this rule is only for PA films, and this indicates cardiomegaly. Number two, we need to check the borders, right and left heart borders. The loss of a right heart border is indicative of right middle lobe consolidation, and the loss of the left border is indicative of lingular consolidation. And finally, you need to look for two more A features, which is number one, the aortic knuckle, which may be lost in an aneurysm, and number two is the AP window, which is usually lost in malignancy due to mediastinal lymphadenopathy. Now this is what cardiomegaly looks like. You can clearly see that the heart's diameter is way more than 50% of the cardiothoracic diameter. And finally, we check extra features, which are three final things. Number one are the bones. You simply look at the clavicles and all of the ribs to check for any fractures. Number two, check for any soft sweat tissue swellings in the x-ray. And third, you check for any equipment that you can see. For example, a pacemaker, a feeding tube, or a nasogastric tube. Now the reason for this is you want to check their location and make sure that it's in the functional position. Here's what that looks like on an x-ray. On the x-ray on the left, you can see an endotracheal tube here. And on the x-ray on the right, you can see clearly is the ECG. Now that's it. You've successfully analyzed and interpreted an x-ray to ace that OSCE station. Well done. To memorize this checklist, download the free PDF notes on my website. I hope this helped you understand x-ray interpretation. Stay tuned for more OSCE guide videos. And stay connected by following The Medic Pro on Instagram and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm so grateful for your support. And I'm here to guide you on your medical journey. God bless and take care.